Hello my fellow garden gals and guys, welcome back to my channel Serenity Now Garden. My name's Jeannie and I garden in a zone 4B. Today I'm so excited, we're going to be talking about those long blooming perennials. I was just at the garden center, I picked up these guys, and from what I can tell so far, these are the longest ones I've ever come across. Um, these are Roseanne geraniums. I'll talk a little bit more about these in a minute, but I'm always on the lookout for for those long bloomers. It just makes the garden just look so much better for so much longer of the season. And here in Minnesota, we can have a short gardening season, so it's important. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any long bloomers that you really like in your garden, share those down below in the comments. I would love to read um, some of your comments and maybe try those out too, since I'm always on the lookout. Um, you know, so many times I really love a perennial. I love the blooms. I'll bring it home. Maybe I didn't do a lot of research on it. Hmm, like a stillbees, for instance. I have a bunch of stillbees still out in my backyard because it's kind of a boggy area and they just do really well and it's kind of shady. And the only bad thing about a stillbees is they only bloom for like two to three weeks. So then they're just, the it's just the foliage to see. So, you know, once I invested in quite a few astilbies and I figured out that, yeah, I really need to start looking more into bloom time, um, that's why I'm always on the lookout. So we'll talk about that today. Anyways, today I'm going to be talking about these plants right here, Roseanne geraniums. You can kind of see this one's just starting to bloom. It has a little purple flower on it. So Roseanne geraniums are really special because of their long bloom time. Um, I have some stats here I'll kind of go over. And actually, Roseanne geraniums in 2008, they were the perennial of the year. They're just easy to grow. And then, you know, just with the blooming, they're deer and rabbit resistant. They could take almost any soil. They just need some moisture. Um, what else here? They bloom from late spring all the way to mid fall. So that is just exceptional. And, you know, like I said, it's early spring, so it's just starting here. These were probably maybe forced a little in the greenhouse, but these are going to be covered with blooms. I will put a picture of the plant tag so you could see it a little closer, but this plant is just gorgeous. I just, I'm so happy I found it. So, some more stats for you here. It says that they grow in zone four to eight. They're 24 inches high, 15 inches wide. They have just a mounding habit. Average water, any soil, like I said, they attract bees. They're deer and rabbit resistant, like I was saying. Um, so, I'm gonna plant these up in my landscape. I'll show you where I'm gonna put them. But first, before we go do that, I just wanna talk about just a couple more plants that I have perennials that I've noticed the bloom time is definitely longer than my other perennials. So I'll definitely be planting more. And I have three in mind. I'll put some pictures up here for you too. So the first one is Fox paniculata. I love like the taller garden Fox. It comes in so many different colors. Um, but the good thing about Fox paniculata is it blooms midsummer to mid fall. So it's really just growing in the spring from nothing. And then all of a sudden, once it starts blooming, it is gorgeous. It is a showstopper. Um, it is just, I love having it in my landscape. Sometimes I'll spray it with some deer spray. Deer don't bother it too much, but they can. So I just do that just in case. I always make sure to get a variety that is, um, mildew the downy mildew resistant because then the the blooms will last a bit longer and they're coming out with all sorts of varieties now that you don't have to worry about the mildew so that is definitely one that i love having in my landscape um, another one is millennium allium now i'll put a picture here too but I, you'll hear me talk about Millennium Allium constantly because they're pretty much my favorite plant. You don't have to do like anything to them. Now, they don't necessarily have a really long bloom time, but they look great for a really long time. So basically, they bloom mid to late summer. 
The foliage is really pretty. It's just kind of like this blue green. So I like it in the spring. And when it starts growing, these little, um, you know, bolt just uh, globes come out, you know, on top of the stems and it's so cute. So when it blooms, they're purple, pinkish purple. And I notice like when people walk by my front garden bed, on the sidewalk, they always like look at this, these plants because they just, yeah, they're just a, an eye catcher basically. But so for Millennium Allium, I always keep them on the, I don't like deadhead them. I just keep them on all the way through winter. I cut them down in the spring because I just love the way they look, the spent blooms even. Like even when like the snow falls on them, they're just so gorgeous. Um, I call that like winter interest, I call it winterist. <laughs> so yeah, they're just great for that. Um, and they're just such a carefree plant. I mean, they don't have any, you know, insects or fungus or anything that um, affects them. Deer and rabbit resistant since they're in the onion family. And yeah, they are drought tolerant. They take the heat of the sun. They are awesome plants. So I highly recommend Millennium Allium if they're in your zone. My last one here I'd like to share is coneflower. So I have Magnus coneflower. It's kind of like an old fashioned type of coneflower in my garden. Um, let's see, they bloom July and September. So they're really just growing in in the spring and early summer. But once they bloom, they can really take the heat. They're drought tolerant and um, they look great like even after they're done blooming. So once September's done, I just leave the seed heads on and they they look really cool in the winter as well. And also those seed heads feed the birds. So those are my three, well, four, including Roseanne Geranium. Um, those are my four plants that I would really recommend if you're looking for a really long bloom, bloom time. Okay guys, sorry that clip got cut off there. Um, I'm still learning my new setup, so just bear with me. <laughs> so this is my front garden bed. Um, you could see the crab apple there. It, it has two crab apples and it's just surrounded by mostly sun loving perennials. Um, there's some bulbs planted here too. So we have in the front here, some silver mound artemisia, and then we'll kind of go down the line that millennium allium. There's five plants right there just behind the silver mound. So that's what they look like in early spring. So I think they're, I think they're nice looking. So we're going to go down the line here. We got some Talia daffodils still blooming. And this is where I decided to put the Roseanne geranium. So it's going to get that hot afternoon sun, but shaded most of the day in the morning and um, around noon. And yeah, I think with the purple flowers, it's really going to be a great contrast with, to that yellow creeping Jenny just behind it. And behind that, we have uh, some foxglove that will get about 48 inches tall. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, please like and subscribe and happy gardening.